Hello. Thank you for joining me today. I want to spend just a few minutes talking about this uh, pandemic that we're going through and again how it's affecting us as a church body, as a community. And just for your information, I wanted to point out something that maybe you didn't think about before and that's how going through this kind of a, a situation with a global pandemic impacting us even regionally and locally does have a similar effect to going through a natural disaster. And so there will be these stages of community experience uh, similar to what we experienced after 9-11. And so uh, at, at the beginning of experiencing this, this traumatic event together as a nation, we might see some heroism, you know, people stepping in immediately to help out where they can. Uh, making sure that uh, there's enough water or food for those who might have a, a particular need. And then following that stage of emergency uh, need, but where we were uh, in that emergency stage of heroism, there also might be some feelings of anxiety and stress because of uh, the impact of what's happening. And then we move into a honeymoon phase as a community. And that's where, again, we see uh, weeks and months of people donating to causes to help out where they can, you know, to help uh, try to alleviate the, the need for food, knowing that uh, many have uh, lost their jobs. And we saw the federal government step in with the, uh, the uh, relief check of $1,200. And so there was that time period of, of wanting to make a positive difference and um, resources being available as, as um, they were able to make them available. And then after several weeks and perhaps months, we move into a, fear, a period of disillusionment where maybe the resources are running out and where maybe um, you know, the impact of this uh, event is dragging on and on and on and we don't know when it's going to ever change for the better and so there's this communal sense of disappointment or anger even resentment towards how things are working out or not working out and that's that's a a common um experience and a common um those are common feelings for uh experiencing this these times of months and weeks after a, a catastrophic event has taken place. And so as a nation, especially in the past week, we may be experiencing a, a great deal of illusion, disillusionment on one, the one hand, and on the other hand, seeing some galvanizing of different kinds of leadership calling for peace, calling for order, calling for cooperation. And then hopefully we will look forward to at some point, um, a sense of, of reconstruction. When we've worked through uh, our communal feelings of, of resentment and anger and, and um, disappointment and sadness, we can come back together and renew a sense of rebuilding, reconstructing, a renewal to the core principles of a particular neighborhood or for us, the church, uh, a particular congregation, renewing a sense of who we are. And again, this is, this, there's no set time period as to when this might happen or take place. Perhaps some of us are already feeling a sense of renewal to GPC, while others are still feeling very angry and upset because things are not going the way they, they would like them to go. Um, but there's this whole variation and continuum of human experience that we live through. Uh, and I just wanted to raise your awareness of this. And, and if you already know this, then it's a reminder that as human beings and human communities, yes, <sighs> take a deep breath. We've been here before as a human community and God walks with us. Let me remind you of the lectionary readings for this upcoming Sunday, June 7th. 
The one of the three that I'm not going to be using it, that you may want to look up for yourself between now and then is Genesis 1, verses 1, all the way through chapter 1 into chapter 2, verse 4. That is talking about the beginning and God's creation of the beginning, where God placed everything in, in motion for us. I won't be using that text. I'll be focusing on the 2 Corinthians passage and the Matthew 28 passage. But I did want to remind you that there is a third one, Genesis 1, chapter 1. And the theme running throughout all of these scripture lessons is that God is relational. God speaks in first person plural in the creation story. Let us do this. Let us. And so God, in the mysterious trinity that we've come to know God as, is relational. And God desires for us to be relational, which isn't always easy. And God knows it's not always easy in families. And if Gilbert Presbyterian Church is to be a church family, let us seek God's wisdom, patience, and love as we continue to move forward together. Let us pray. Our most loving and gracious creator, heavenly Father and loving Savior, Jesus, you are three in one. We thank you that the mystery of who you are can feed us as we meditate on your presence with us. Help us to bring to you all of our anxiety, our anxiousness, our hopes, our dreams, our fears, that we may lay them at the foot of the cross and empty ourselves as best we are able to receive the guidance and the direction that you would bring us. Thank you that we have safety in our homes. Thank you that we have resources to look to. Thank you that we can share some of these resources with others in need. We pray that we may walk faithfully with you this day and this week, and by doing so, know your, your joy and peace. We give you praise and thanksgiving, all in Jesus' name. Amen. And so thank you for joining me today.